This alters how we perceive the desert in Saudi Arabia. As one of the largest deserts in the world, the Saudi Arabian desert spans a sizable territory of more than 650,000 square kilometers with daily highs frequently topping 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The area is renowned for its severe heat. For many years, we have imagined the Saudi Arabian desert as a huge, lifeless wilderness. Recent scientific findings, however, have shown that the truth is very different. What horrifying finding has been reported in Saudi Arabia? Let's find out. The existence of ancient riverbeds and lakes beneath the desert's surface has been one of the most exciting findings. These findings have convinced scientists that the area was previously covered in a lush green environment like the Amazon rainforest. The region grew desolate and hostile as a result of the changing environment over time. The remains of extinct species that have been preserved in rocks, silt or other substances are known as fossils. The discovery of fossils is a crucial step in comprehending the evolution of life on Earth and offers important information about how various species have changed over time. Scientists have found a number of surprising and fascinating fossils in the Saudi Arabian desert. A group of dinosaur footprints that were found in the Rub al Khalid desert in 2020 was one of the most amazing discoveries. A group of foreign academics who were investigating the region's geology came across the footprints. They discovered a collection of odd patterns that resembled footprints while utilizing drones and satellite pictures to study the surface of the desert. When they looked more closely, they found a group of well-preserved dinosaur tracks that had been created in a muddy swamp. The footprints are important because they shed light on the habits and movements of these extinct animals. Since it was previously thought that Saudi Arabian desert was too hot or arid to maintain such big and diversified groups of dinosaurs, they also present a challenge to our understanding of the past of the area. In the Saudi Arabian desert, in addition to dinosaur footprints, researchers have now also found an old finger bone that might indicate how humans left Africa. This could rewrite a crucial chapter in the history of humanity concerning the origin and global dispersal of our species in Africa. The bone is among the earliest examples of modern humans existing outside of Africa. Its discoverers contend that we now need to rejuvenate our beliefs on when and how modern people first left their African birthplace. The finger bone was discovered by Hugh Grokert from the University of Oxford in the UK and his colleagues at a location named Al Wusta in what is now the Nefud Desert. Uncertain whose finger it belongs to, it is the second bone in from the fingertip. The team immediately identified the bone as human and later validated their identification by comparing it to the finger bones of other humans, extinct homins like the Neanderthals and other primates like gorillas. Using exact methods that depend on the radioactive uranium's disintegration, they were able to date the bone in question directly. According to the research team, the bone is at least 85,000 years old. Many archaeologists have long held the view that our species only emerged from Africa 70,000 years ago, spreading quickly from there into Asia and Europe before arriving in the Americas. But a number of discoveries in the Levant, which is the region east of the Mediterranean and including nations like Israel and Syria, have made that tale appear more tenuous. It appears that people were present here more than 100,000 years ago. A human jawbone from Israel that was 177,000 years old was recently revealed by a team led by Israel Hershkovitz of the Tel Aviv University and Mina Weinstein Evron of the University of Haifa, Israel. This demonstrated that people had been present in the Levant for many thousands of years. However, many archaeologists think that the Levant was a bottleneck and that human migration did not occur until 70,000 years ago. Parts of Asia, including China and India, have ancient artifacts and fossils, some of which appear to be human. However, in each case, the dating has been disputed or some people do not think the remains are those of modern humans. 
The Alwaster finger bone is the oldest confirmed fragment of a modern human discovered outside of Africa and the Levant due to this doubt. It demonstrates that our ancestors advanced past the bottleneck of the Levant much earlier than previously believed, setting up a new staging area in Saudi Arabia from which they could advance into the remainder of Asia. Perhaps because Arabia was a desirable area to live in, people began to colonize it at a young age. Rich grassland covered in perennial freshwater lakes existed in the Al Wusta site 85,000 years ago, when Arabia's climate was wetter than it is today. At least 860 animal bones were discovered by the researchers, with water-loving creatures like hippos and buffalo being the most prevalent. Also, the scientists discovered 380 stone artifacts, indicating that many of our predecessors may have resided near lakes. They were nomadic bands of hunters and gatherers that would have been living around lakes, foraging for plants and animals, and possibly subsisting on aquatic resources. The discovery contributes to a long-running debate on how humans left Africa. Did they depart Africa by crossing the Middle East to what is now Iran, traveling up the Nile into the Sinai and then across the region? Or perhaps when water levels were sometimes lower during the last ice age, they could have crossed or navigated past the Red Sea into Arabia before going straight to Iran via the Persian Gulf. Whereas Hershkovitz and Weinstein Evron favor the northern route through the Levant, Grokarts and Petraglia contend that the southern route through Arabia was the most significant. A 2015 genetic study that backed the northern route received criticism for its methodology. According to Weinstein Evron, the question of whether the early humans found in the Levant and Arabia are all part of the same population, or if they are the result of different migrations from Africa, is more intriguing. The Al Wusta study lends credence to the idea that Homo sapiens left Africa in numerous, maybe practically continuous pulses, and that local damp events may have caused the dispersals. Other fossils have been discovered in the Saudi Arabian desert, including prehistoric fish and the remnants of a whale that lived more than 30 million years ago. The history of the area and its significance to the global ecosystem have been further illuminated by these finds. Because the fossils were buried in sediment or other materials that shielded them from erosion and deterioration, they have lasted for millions of years. These materials eventually hardened into rocks, which protected the fossils and made it possible for researchers to find them. Overall, the discovery of fossils in the Saudi Arabian desert has challenged our preconceptions of the region as a lifeless wasteland while offering insightful information about its past. The significance of safeguarding the area's natural resources and conserving its distinctive cultural legacy has been brought to light by these discoveries. On the other hand, we may now finally understand why enigmatic patterns are visible throughout the Arabian desert. Researchers have located thousands of enormous stone constructions all over the Arabian Peninsula, from Jordan to Saudi Arabia to Syria, Armenia, Kazakhstan and Iraq. British Air Force pilots initially noted the V-shaped arrangements in the 1920s and for more than a century, specialists have argued over their purpose. New satellite photographs and drone surveys in Saudi Arabia's Uwayrai Desert have confirmed a widely held belief. These ancient stone designs, sometimes known as desert kites, are currently being studied by archaeologists who believe that they were most likely mass hunting traps. Recently discovered in Uwayri are dozens of previously undiscovered desert kites, all of which appear to have been constructed with a familiar purpose in mind. The V-shapes indicate various things, such as a hole, a sudden cliff, and an enclosure. All three patterns imply that wild animal herds were formerly herded into desert kites and flown to their demise or imprisonment. Although more research is required to determine exactly what animals were being herded into the recently discovered traps, the fact that they have been found in various regions of the Arabian Peninsula implies that this was a common and successful survival tactic. 
Archaeologists have discovered thousands of more stone buildings and hundreds of stone kites further south, for instance. As opposed to those in the Uweri Desert, desert kites farther south are typically more intricate and focused. They occasionally mix several V-shapes. Because of their propensity to appear in sandy areas that would have formerly supported seasonal grasslands, archaeologists have previously claimed that these buildings were utilized as hunting traps. The vegetation most likely supported migratory goats, gazelles, and other herding animals. Several prehistoric rock art depictions from this period also show the employment of kite-like devices to funnel animals. One of the earliest attempts at domestication discovered anywhere on the globe may have been made using some kites based on the way they were built. Another recent study on desert kites notes that it is not unusual to find a variety of kites in one area. Some of these kites have end openings to pits, while others have end openings to enclosures. It's possible that kites and open kites were in use at the same time, establishing related but distinct hunting strategies. The development of one technique may have paved the way for the other over time, with primitive types of proto-kites preceding the more developed and standardized varieties of desert kites. To discern between these two alternatives, more study is required. Neolithic society's picture may eventually shed light on how early humans first started hunting and domesticating animals. Perhaps the first step in our species' ability to breed and raise wild herds as our own was getting up close and personal with them. Yet not all of these desert kites' components are necessarily useful. In even bigger stone constructions called mustatils, which can extend for kilometers, some kites have been discovered embedded. A block pattern of mustatils, the Arabic word for rectangle, resembles a gate when viewed from above. Archaeologists have recently discovered several hundred mustatils in the Arabian desert, but they are still unsure of their purpose. In spite of the possibility that they served as religious or ceremonial structures for animal sacrifices or feasts, their connection to desert kites raises the possibility that they were also employed for water storage or animal corralling. These stone constructions must have been extremely useful or prized for whatever purpose they served. They encircle the area and preliminary dating efforts indicate that they have been present on the Arabian Peninsula for a very long time. Although Saudi Arabia's desert kites have been well known for years, the scientific community has paid them surprisingly little attention. The ball is finally starting to move after years of archaeologists advocating for further investigation into the remains of these ancient societies. Beginning in 2022, archaeologists conducting research in Saudi Arabia discovered a 530 kilometer wide network of abandoned motorways in the northwest of the country. Thousands of twisting stone burial chambers flanked those ancient pathways, which appeared to connect one oasis to another. A lot of these oases also had desert kites. The highways were discovered by archaeologists, who believe that ancient nomadic peoples who were seeking out the greatest lands and climates used them. Archaeologists are seeking to retrace their steps thousands of years later. These findings have generally refuted the notion that the Saudi Arabian desert is a dead wasteland and have brought to light the region's significance to global ecology and human history. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.